My name is Laura Schifrin, and I'm chairman of the Townsend Housing Authority, and I'm calling the meeting to order of Thursday, December 10th at 7 p.m. I would like to request a roll call of the Townsend Housing Authority Board. Uh, Chad Sexton Duranian present. And Laura Schifrin present. And I do not see Courtney or Natalie. Oh, just a minute. Natalie just came in. Courtney just came in. Gary just came in. Okay. Uh, Natalie and Courtney, can you please announce your names and that you're here? Hi, Courtney Riley here. Hey, Courtney. Hi. Natalie Carl here. Thank you so much. I'll turn the opening over to Joan. Um, uh, it's uh, 7.01 p.m. on uh, Thursday, December 10th. I'm opening the meeting of the Townsend uh, Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Uh, Joan Savoy present, and will the other members please identify yourselves? Joe Shank present. I know Gary is on. I do not see a mic. Uh, let me just see. Connecting to audio. Oh, yeah, I see that. Okay, he is in the meeting. We can have him announce as soon as his audio begins to work. And so um, the Townsend Housing Authority does have a quorum. And Joan? We will when we get Gary. Okay, he's there. I don't know why he's having trouble with the audio. Mm, he's away hey, from Gary. his computer, but he's there. He comes. There he is. Hey. Okay. hey, Gary, we need audio. There he goes. He, he just had to click it. Okay. Awesome. Gary, can you announce that you're on? I'm on. Okay. <laughs> and will you announce your quorum? Uh, uh, this, uh, we have a quorum of the uh, TAHT. And Gary, you have to say your name, please, and say you're here. Okay. Gary Shepard. Present. Gary Shepard, present. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, that's both boards, and I would like to ask those who are also in the audience to please announce who is here. Jody. Jim Kreidler's on the call. Okay, Jim Kreidler's on. Jody DeShanes. Steve Sheldon. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. All right. I believe that is everyone. Uh, well, I see, except Hartley is on as Jerry Bichette. Mm -hmm. And okay, here we go. Um, Wayne, you have been admitted into the meeting. Can you announce that you're here? I'm here. I'm, I'm driving. I'm sorry. I've got to be myself. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think we have everyone now, and no one is in the waiting room. Oh, um. What? 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 Wayne. That is. Oh, Wayne. That's you. Wayne Miller. Wayne Miller. Thank you. And we're recording, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm just about to announce that we are recording the meeting. I'd like you all to join me. I'm. I've left my screen up with the flag. Uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and to the Republic, Republic which stands, stands for the nation. Under God, God indivisible, liberty, liberty, and justice for all. Okay. And as always, we thank our veterans um, for past and present. Um, I have no additions or deletions to tonight's agenda. And Chaz, do you have a report? 
for us as a state rep? Yes, I have two two quick announcements. Um, announcement number one is I met with Sheila Harrington today. Um, she is not able to come to our meeting tonight, um, but I will fill her in on what we talk about here. Um, she had put us down for the 15th uh, as opposed to today. So <clears throat> she does have some things that uh, she needs to attend to tonight. Um, we are... Um, I had talked with her in regards to uh, what we need from DHCD going forward. So I told her that in our meeting tonight, we'll talk about what is needed. And then with the board's permission, I'll be able to talk with her and, and she and I will be able to approach DHCD on any of the issues that we need to um, in regards to that. Um, the second one is the, uh, I had as one of my tasks, the warrant article for funding for the housing production plan. Um, I will be submitting that um, to, um, I'll submit it to the chair and then the chair can submit it to the rest of the board uh, if they like. I'll probably have that finished probably by this weekend. And that's all I had. Thank you, Chaz. Um, does anybody have any questions? Hearing none, Joan, take it away. Okay, thank you. So uh, the work session is beginning here at 7.06 p.m. So I'd like to report, please, that the um, the trust document's been filed as, officially as of 11.17 for the um, Affordable Housing Trust Fund. We have successfully recruited uh, Central Massachusetts Housing Authority as, their ma as our management partner for the um, COVID CARES Round 2 CVRF funds. The MOU was returned yesterday, signed by Leah Bradley, the executive director. Uh, I had sent it to her sign. And um, so, Jim, who, who do I give that to, please? I'm sorry, Joan, again. Who do I give that uh, signed MOU to? You keep a copy for your files and then one in with the accountant's office, just so when she's processing, um, she'll have that back up. Thank you, accountant's office. Okay, so so that's great. And um, we look forward to, to working with them. Um, the last time she and I spoke, she said there had been one application received, but she hasn't gotten back to me if there are any more. So I can't tell you if there are any more that have been received. Was that application acted on? I do. I cannot answer that definitively because the MOU had not been signed yet. Okay. But she does know that um, we were approved for the forty thousand. Um, am I? Well, wait a minute. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, um, can I back up to my three point three? Lori? Yes, I'm sorry. I didn't mean no, to. No, no, that's, that's quite all right. Uh, you're, uh, um, this is so new to me. So um, the MO, you all received a copy of that MOU and um, it was approved uh, by uh, Mr. Costa, the town council. The, this is what I learned um, and the verbiage had to reflect it that the monies applied for, they are applied for by income eligible town residents. The monies do not go directly to the resident. They go to the um, property owner, say the landlord or the mortgage holder, the bank. So just so we're clear on that. Um, anybody have a question about that? No, that's how, that's how it should be. Right. Uh, three, four, 3.4 update on the round two funds. So we are definitely getting the uh, 40,000. Um, my understanding is we're still waiting to hear on the additional 60,000. Madam Chair, I, I did speak with Brendan today from the state's office that's coordinating these funds. And he has received the 
additional request to make it 100,000, and he said that we should expect to receive those funds beginning next week. So we don't have it officially in writing yet, but he did give me the verbal approval of the 100 today. That's lovely. Thank you. That's great news. Good. May, may I ask a question on that, uh, Madam Chair? Certainly. So the additional funds, is that in the same timeline as what we had for the 40,000? It is, I yes. I believe so. Yep. Okay. Um, Just being which, the timeline being <laughs> that the, the grant expires the end of this month and the monies have to be returned in January unless there's an extension. Has anyone applied for the extension yet? Or what do uh, we do? The extension would, uh, Jim, the, would the, wouldn't the extension come from the feds? Yeah, right now it's, it's, it's all being driven by the federal government and they have a hard stop at December 30th. Um, everything we've heard from our federal rep is that they're working in Congress let that sink in for a minute. They're working in Congress <laughs> yeah, right. to try to get that extended as a part of the stimulus package that they're wrestling over right now. So there's efforts being made because across the state and across the nation, people haven't been able to, to roll this type of a program out quickly enough to be able to have it help people. So um, that's, that's all we know. It's officially still the 30th, but they're working hard to try to get it pushed out. Well, how do we get the people in our community to take and get them to apply for this so we can get some of that money out there before the end of the year, Joan? That's uh, 3.7. <laughs> oh, good. We're only on 3.5. <laughs> okay. So, but that's a good question, and we will address that. So, all right. Uh, 3.5, please. So, um, oh, uh, CMHA said, do we want to use as our, all right, let me, I'll back up. A AMI is the area median income. And that's what they based your income eligibility on. Um, it's 80% unless we vote it to 50%. So I would like to take a vote now with this board on, um, um, if we'd like to get a motion on, on changing the AMI, uh, lowering it from 80% of area median income down to 50%, which would open the door for a lot more people. I'll make a motion. We I'm waiting. change. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm not computing that correctly, I don't think. I think uh, it's the opposite. I think it's yeah. the opposite. Yep. Because if you want to go up to a higher percent to open up the people that will qualify versus a lower percent, Chaz, am, am I saying this right? Correct. Because, okay, let's just use round numbers. Say um, the, the, high, the income for the area is 100000 Right. Okay, if you lower it to 50%, that's only people that are up to 50, you know, 50,000, 50, 50,000, 50, 50, mm -hmm. okay, versus somebody up to 80,000. And 100 isn't the average, it's more like 62 or 60. So you figure out 80 of that, it's still, those people need some help. Okay. okay? So, so, I'm so hearing wanna, 80 is the number. Yeah. Okay. That, my that my, my, my um, apologies. This is no, no. Now are we at 80 now? We're at, we're at 80. We're, um, we have to notify them. I believe she's going, she's got the 80, but um, I told her we were going to vote tonight on where, where, where we wanted it. So you want to make that motion, Joe, then for 80? I make a motion that we keep the AMI at 80%. That's the area medium income. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Uh, you really need, you you really need to take your me. name, Joe. Uh, Laurie, am I doing something wrong? Yeah, you need where you need Gary to second that. The chair does not make motions or thank you. second them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Gary Shepard, second. Roll call vote, Joan Savoy, aye. Joe Shank, aye. Gary Shepard, aye. Okay, thank you very much, and forgive me. 
Um, item 3.6. So CMHA keeps asking me for a billing template um, for them to use with the town. And Laurie sent me this um, template, <laughs> incredibly generic. I thought absolutely not absolutely not appropriate. So I have an email out to Leah saying, look, do you have some kind of billing template you're using now that you really like that really works for you? Or I'll just create one that I think will work for you and I'll add the, you know, some verbiage, like, you know, attach this doc, you know, documentation. Since she really knows the documentation. Uh, so I'm waiting to hear from her on that. I don't think it's incredibly pressing because nothing's happened yet, but um, just please know she and I are kind of back and forth on this uh, billing thing. Um, billing, temp billing template. Yeah, may I ask, um, Madam Chair, sure. what, this is the you, a billing that we're sending out to them or what, what billing template are we talking what, about? No, the, temp the template CMHA will use to will send to the town of Townsend to show, and it will show with mm, people's names protected, right? Mm -hmm. The m amount, the, the households, the, the monies uh, f for the benefit of the eligible household, who the money actually went to, and then they are then paid by the town and we they get 10% of, uh, CMHA gets 10% of those funds for their fee. Okay. So I figured why not have them submit some kind of template they're already using and they, they're comfortable with and they know even. Right. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. Thanks. Three, seven. Okay. Joe formulation plan for getting the CVRF work, um, work. That's a typo out to townsfolk word. That should be word out to townsfolk needs to be on the front of the town webpage say i that would be lovely for i starters. did see it there i think it is it is there yeah is it yeah yep and, and like really big well it's with it's with the other announcements um it's on facebook too yeah I don't do Facebook, so. Um. Well, I think it's on the Townsend Chaz. Is it Townsend United and Townsend? What's going on? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that I I put it on Country Estates and um, sent it to their board and got it out to some tenants that I thought it would help, um, but. I'm not sure how we get it out to people that are um, having trouble with their mortgages. Well, how about this? So if our tax revenues are down and the town knows, so anyone that is having trouble paying their mortgage, that means they're having trouble paying their town taxes, One, right? One would assume. So what if the town, uh, in all confidentiality, of course, reviewed the uh, tax payment records and sent individual notification letters to uh, those people. It would have to be the, the people would have to do it on their own. It's not something that we need to market like that. Um, my my suggestions would be to put a stack of those in in the local banks. Um, there is also I had a suggestion from. Um, uh, a, a another colleague of mine that um, there is um, possibility that um, there there could be mailings out from the school uh, from the local schools that we could we could ask the principals or their superintendent to to send that out. Oh, for. that's a fabulous idea. Um, but we I think pe people need to contact us. Where you, you know it's not like we can direct mail somebody. You know, I, I photocopied several of them and put it on in my waiting room, and I've had to re-photocopy the amount of people that have taken them. I don't know where they go from there, but if we can get them out into all the local businesses, put them on their waiting counters, I, I mean, the more people see it, that's the only way we're going to get the interest around here. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it, it breaks my heart that uh, we had this money... And nobody seems to, I, I know 
pride can be a big thing for people, right? And and not and saying or you know admitting they need the funds. Maybe we need to stress in our and the flyers and stuff the confidentiality of the applications. Um, you know, because people don't want other people knowing their business. I don't know how we can protect, make people feel secure in the confidentiality aspect. Well, part of the main reason why we go through a third party like we do is to protect that. You know, that's the main reason why we do that. And and I, I understand that, you know, it, it's there there is a pride thing, um, but we also have to understand, and I'm saying this as, as a person that works in human services, is that we need to provide, you know, the, the saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, okay? But you can make him thirsty. And that's what we're trying to do is make them thirsty. So I think that while we talk about this, and we've been on, you know, it's getting out there. People are watching Channel 9, mm -hmm. and that's all we can do is just keep, you know, advocating for what we're trying to tell people. Just mm -hmm. pay attention, come, go look, ask questions. The money's there. We're willing to give it to them. They just got to ask the questions. Yes. And, so, and we also have to understand that this is new. This is, uh, you know, we just started with the, the, the trust fund and, and people are, you know, people get a little nervous when something is brand new. So we have to be patient. The more that we, we market things, I mean, we, we went through the same thing with the housing authority. You know, we, we really started marketing a lot of some of the things that we were doing and slowly but surely, you know, things, things are going to, going to come out. So Joan, I, I, I appreciate and applaud your, your zest and your zeal for, for getting this out there you know we we just have to be patient you know to understand that the people are going to have to you know they're, they're going to need to we have to build trust and we have to you know show them that we are we've got these things in place they're you know their their confidentiality is secure and we're doing all we can to to help them can we uh, is there a way for when the bill comes in from CMHA that the income eligible person for whom the monies are paid to their, you know, their uh, landlord or their, their bank, their mortgage holder, that that name is turned into a number. That's because something that you would need to talk to. I would assume um, the C CMHA about. Well, does anybody have any thoughts on that? That it seems to me, why? I mean, we of course have faith in CMHA. They're you know they're the professionals management partner. Um, maybe it would be best if those names never hit town hall at all. That that wouldn't be public information. Yeah. Ah, right. None of none of that, that would. Right. So. Right. The only thing that the town does after they receive the money is pay on someone's behalf that grant money. Right. Okay. But outside of that, there's, I mean, Jim could tell us there's, there's no reason why that information would be given to anyone. So it's like a doctor's, your, your privacy, your file with your doctor kind of thing. Yeah, no one I mean, would know. No, I don't even think when when you as a trust fund gets a report, you're not going to get names. No, and I've I've explicitly told her I don't want to know them. I just we just want to know um, who is getting the money, which you know it's the purse, the the mortgage holder or the landlord, etc. Correct. Right. For the benefit of family X. Right, but, but even that, Joan, you'd still be able to deduce in most cases who that's going to. If it's a landlord, mm -hmm. you'll know. You uh, know which complex. Right, or, or you know, which private property owner. So what, what you'll likely see is a randomized number representing the name of the person and the landlord from your vendor. The information that they send in for payment will include the names because when we are audited, which we will be for how the town is spending these funds, they're gonna to need to see 
who the people are and all the backup information, their applications and all mm -hmm. the, the documentation that shows that they were in fact eligible. It's mm -hmm. no different than the community development block grant program where people submit for housing rehabilitation funds. They go through a process where they're vetted. They get pre-qualified based on their income percentage of AMI and all that information remains confidential, but it needs to be on file in case the feds ever come in and pull the file to audit it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it is confidential and very few people will be seeing that. Uh, ne nearly, nearly no one. Yeah, nearly no one will see yeah. it. You'll, you'll have the, the accountant and the treasurer will be the right. two, the checks and balance yeah. that will make the process. Okay, all right. Thank you, that's helpful. So is CMHA doing anything to market? Um, just what they normally do. Um, I mean, you know, if, you know, I, I always think about people who have language difficulties or, you know, or speak a different language or aren't computer savvy or how are they finding out? Because everywhere I've seen that the, the um, Raft and Irma and the COVID advertise it's online and it's, through this agency and that agency, and they all have big long names, and it so it would be so off-putting for someone who was, you know, probably maybe vulnerable. And I mean, if if we're paying them ten percent of whatever funds they distribute, then I, I would only one think that they are doing something to have an input other than just paperwork. Correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I mean, they have their website, and if you go online and you start typing in relief, it goes, you know, for this area, it goes right to them. Mm -hmm. um, and there and are, in the, those organizations too, Joe, I'm sorry to cut you off there, Joan. Um, those organizations also are affiliated with any other, um, if somebody's looking for voucher programs or whatever, they have a relationship with those organizations oh, okay. to, to say that, you know, if you're having trouble right now, this is, you know, this What's is available. Right. Okay. That's right. good. All right. So, you know, maybe the thing to do is I'll take these flyers around to the local banks, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe they banks, businesses, them. everybody ask them, put them in their yeah. waiting rooms. The yeah. bank um, would be a good place T, then. T, T, what's the TEO, Natalie? What's that? Yeah, a TEO, and then we got a VFW too. Right. So you know, we have people that come here Natalie? too. So TEO so, from Blueberry Hill. Sorry. Yeah. So they. Thank you. I, I sent it to somebody who's very active in TEO, uh, so that so the flyer. I don't know if they made copies, but that's something to look into. Is there? At the TBA got uh, Towns and Business Association got a copy of the flyer. I don't know what they did with it, but it was there to put out there. And as far as the banks go, they don't have lobby hours, mm -hmm. so you're not getting the traffic in the banks that you used to get. Uh, good idea, but. It isn't what it used to be. You have to have an appointment to go in. There aren't that many people who get into the banks themselves. Would the banks be willing to put them in the little banky tubes that go through the thing and then they come out with money and a flyer? <laughs> I can, I, you know what? I, I can talk to somebody at workers um, and see if that's doable. And if it's doable there, then maybe it's doable at Rollstone. Um, so we can check that out and see if they would be willing to do that. I, there might be a bank policy about right. that, you know? Exactly. Is there, is there any place in town hall, outside of town hall, yeah. that they, you know, there's some sort of a little setup. You can have a whole bunch of them slid in as all these people are coming to read the board for notifications. They'll yeah. see that and just pull it out. You know, like you see when the real estate people, you have an open house, they have a little plastic tray that all the, the flyers of that home's in. Can we set something like that up outside of town hall? I mean, that's a that's great idea, Joe. Get, that's where you'd get your most people are coming. Mm -hmm. Right. So they're going to read the board. So, oh my God, what is this? Take a copy out and just amongst all of us, just make sure we keep it full. And, and that's a great, great way to have it right at the doorstep, you know, any of our public buildings, put them in our public mm -hmm. buildings outside the, the front doors of them. That's a great idea. I'll mm -hmm. look into it. I'll, I'll pay for them. Some of those, like a real estate has one of those plastic little houses. Yeah. Just 
as long as the town allows us if to put them they in. If they allow it, yeah. we'll, have, we'll have to ask. I, I have some of those in my garage. I'm happy to donate them. Oh, thank oh, you. There you go. Right there. Larry's got them. Well, <laughs> then um, can we take a vote then that I'll go, I'll approach the town asking for permission to put those little plastic flyer houses out in front of town owned areas because i do know don't people go to town hall to pay bills sometimes right outside of, right outside the door there mm -hmm. right jody yeah uh yeah jim, I are you still there yes uh jim do, do you have a comment about trying to put a um a plastic holder outside of town hall which will have a bunch of flyers in it it's i think that's i think it's great i mean back when people were coming into the building we did have the the racks on the first floor and then the big table with everybody's literature on the second floor so mm -hmm. i don't see any reason we wouldn't want to put one right up on the the side near the the bulletin board that it's under lovely. yeah it's undercover so you're not going to get snow or rain on it and okay. joan there is a, there is a lockbox there joan where people do come to pay their taxes if they don't want to come inside they go to the lockbox right that's so what i thought put it, put it right next to that that would be great. So do we have to vote on that or? Um, you, you probably want to, just so you have a record of the things you're doing, but um, we can definitely, I don't know if Wayne is still on the call or not, but um, we have a meeting coming up next Tuesday night and I'm, I'm sure that'd be no problem at all. Wayne you know, is still late. on the call. Um, yeah, no, that's, 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 the, that's a no brainer. Just put them up. Okay. Great, thank you, cool. That's uh, Joe, fabulous idea. Good job. Where'd you go? There you are. I'm here. I had to plug in. I was battery dying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that happens. And I can plug some in at the VFW, too. So I thank can put you. Some in thank can you. Put some can, in. We, can we leave them in the tax collector's office, Jim? Oh, really? For the people that yeah. come in to pay? Absolutely. Oh, that's right. Some right. off and leave them right by yep. where they pay. Mm -hmm. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how we're going to push this and help the people, yeah. the citizens of the town. We got to get it out in front of them. If we don't have well, it can, in front of them, we're not going to get anywhere. And I can post it on the uh, Townsend VFW group I have, so we can put it out there too. You never know. Just keep the pushing. Morning. Keep pushing. That's it. Jody, can you, uh, Jim, or at the town hall, make a couple hundred copies of the flyer? Yeah. Like I contributed. Not a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, well, that's that's that was invigorating. Okay, good. So uh, three point, does anybody have any other comments about that or questions or anything within the realm of our bullet points here? I'm good. Okay, thanks. So 3.8. So this is discuss the background and status of the town's 2018 Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, to Townsend. It was awarded in the amount of 800000 plus. It had 43 added to it for fuel assistance and rehabilitation of 15 housing units. So I have... Um, by the way, what is the name of this board? Are we the Townsend Affordable Housing Trust? Is it is that correct? Yes. Thank that's you. your legal that's your legal name. That's what I thought. Okay. And so but of course all on my minutes I put T H A T instead of T A H T. Um, okay, so there so I've when I was Googling of course I want to learn things, right, about grants because I didn't know anything about them really until I got this job. And um, so I find that we were awarded this grant in fiscal year 2018. And so I've, I've been researching it and I have sent you all um, documents, my, my, um, my board. And um, I think well, hang on. Uh, we're supposed to, I believe it's on here. Oh, okay. Well, all right. So that, so does anybody have any questions so far? You guys, you've, you've seen the, the documentation, right? So, you yep. know, we have, we were awarded that grant. Okay. Right. And it's, and it's, and it's administered by, um, community opportunities group. Apparently. So, um, 
uh, Montachusett Regional Planning Commission got us that grant, but for a year they were not allowed to administer any grants. They would have administered it, but something happened over there, and the um, people in Cambridge said, no, you can't um, administer grants for a while. So that's why the town had to do the uh, RFP, which you all have seen. Um, to get a management partner, just like we did with CMHA, right? For the for the CDBG. Yep. Um, I asked for an accounting of the grant, and I was referred to a Diane Hansen of CO, COG Community Opportunities Group. And I will say this has been my experience thus far. She took a week to get back to me. Now, granted, I did leave my first phone message the day after Thanksgiving, but um, no email response. I made two other phone calls, so um, it took over a week. It was a week and a day before she got back to me. Um, and I don't... I don't think I could categorize her response to my questions as being overly enthusiastic. So, um, at any rate, um, I have asked for more information. I've put in some public rec uh, public records requests with the town, um, and the president of COG has sent me some um, responses which you have seen. Um, I, so that'll be 3.9. Going to 3.10, I have a lot of questions about this grant. And I don't believe right now is the time to really ask the questions unless anybody has something they'd like to ask of me, what I can tell you. But I, this is, what I would like to do, um, and my questions do concern oversight, accountability, disbursement protocol, how we proceed, um, the management contract, the eight hundred thousand dollar grant. They were um, be, to be, they are being paid a flat fee of one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Hundred and sixty thousand. They are being paid a hundred and sixty thousand dollars out of the eight hundred thousand dollar grant. Out of the eight hundred, and it what is. are we paying? What are we paying a company a hundred and sixty thousand dollars for? Well, again, I think that's another conversation. And Mr. Wayne Dara, the president of the company asked why I didn't invite him to join us tonight. And I said, look, we're just trying to wrap our head around this. And Jim, I know you you have a lot to say and you have a lot of information, but I, I think right now, because I have many, many questions, I have gone over what I have. I haven't even finished my, my getting the documents I want to look at. I have got so many underlines and, and I've, I've been in contact with the um, Mark Southerd, who's the, um, the the you know the grant contact in Cambridge at the Department of Housing there. Um, I think that's another conversation, and we have it with the BOS soon. If oh, I have I, John, not to interrupt you. All yeah. Right, so, I, and I don't know a lot about that eight hundred thousand dollar grant, but the way I understand it was money given, the grant that was given to the to the town for different things to be taken care of. Housing However, rehab and fuel assistance. Right. Okay. However, I, I, I'm, I'm just baffled as to the 106, we're paying somebody or we paid somebody $160,000 to do what? That's where out of that 800, there's 160,000 where? Okay. So if you read the Mm, documents I sent over. They sent. They had. Uh, Wayne gave me the. Um, and I got it through PRR also. The uh, ba -ba 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 grant management plan um, spells out. Well, not the grant management plan. 
the agreement between the town of Townsend and the community opportunities group signed in June of two, two, nine, 2019 spells out who's getting paid, how they're getting paid, and all of that. But again, I think that's a separate conversation and it really needs to be had. This is my concern. And for right now, I'd like to jump to 3.11. 3. I think, so this, that grant, by the way, expires on December 31st, which is what, less than three weeks from now? And um, I, it's my understanding it's being extended till maybe next June. But of the 15, they were supposed to do 15 rehab projects. Um, 10 have been done. And this is, this, is, this is what sticks in my craw a little bit. Fuel assistance has gone out at 26,000, 20 something and change. And there was $8,000, they were paid $8,000 for that. And, and, I, and some of my questions, which you guys have back and forth um, with COG, I call them COG, they, um, they said they don't do anything on the fuel assistance. I said, well, who do you shop the fuel rate with? You know, do you get, you know, like for instance, do you go to Hafner's and they give you a super duper price and then they fill and they, they go, nope, the people just use whoever they're using. They fill their tanks up and then the bill gets paid. So that's not what, in, in my book as a business person, I call oversight. But again, yeah, I'm, I'm the retired one around here. So I'm going to keep going. Um, well, you got a lot of time on your hands. Good right, for you. Well, no, I actually do not. I'm also a painter, and that's my favorite place to be down in the studio. But um, th you know, I also believe in community service. So, but so I'm I'm also a good little research person. Um, so I'm gonna keep keep going. But I would like to, I'd like us to make a meeting with the BOS to discuss these things. Right now, if we go to 311, 3.11. I believe we have an urgent need, and the urgent need is to get the notice of this grant, these monies, out to our townspeople who deserve these monies because there is $300,000 more than still sitting in that grant that has not been given to our townspeople. And you, I know there's got to be a lot of people out there right now that could use fuel assistance. I know there has to be a few people hanging around with a leaky roof after this kind of weather. And this is very upsetting to me personally as a human being. And I would like us to take a vote uh, to um, be, uh, it wouldn't be our whole board, it would just be uh, Chaz and Laurie and me next um Tuesday night at the BOS to be put on as an urgent addition to their um, agenda uh, to discuss we, how we get this out to people and et cetera. Do you, do you have to have the full board there? I mean, just one person or we vote to put you in charge? I mean, how's that going to work? Well, I, I, I think if and we don't want to overwhelm them, I mean, certainly Joe, like if you wanted to go to the meeting, but I think, I mean, certainly me since I've been doing all the research, but Chaz and Lori have been around the block with this sort of thing for a long time. Okay. And um, I'd, like to, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, Mr. Right. Shepherd. Gary Shepherd here. I'd like to make a motion that um, we authorize the chair of the uh, Townsend Housing Authority, awesome. along with uh, as much as two, not less than one other representative to um, investigate the um, the status of that uh, that fund, that grant, the Townsend Community Development Block Grant ga granted in 2018. Um, second, at the next earliest convenience. Can I can I can we hold on one second? I think at the early my my th this that grant is supposed to expire the end of this month. And I think we need people to know about the fuel assistance piece. And that's why I think we have to request an urgent meeting with the BOS uh, for Tuesday night to get to discuss that. And then I would suggest we have another motion asking to be on the BOS agenda for the 22nd of December to discuss the grant itself. Does that sound fair? Because I think we don't, I don't, if we start, I think if we cloud up the two issues, we're going to get weighted down. That's just my opinion. Uh, well, Chad, Wayne, what do you 
is Wayne is Wayne on here with us? What yeah, is, I am. I'm a little confused why you need our the board of selectmen to make too. an announcement. Um, you guys have the perfect authority to to make announcements and do that. It's not board of selectmen have nothing to do with. It. It's your well, committee. I, I can't make an announcement without knowing a few things. And I did get the but I did get the organizational chart that was submitted with the grant to um, to the uh, Department of Housing and Community Development. And it shows the towns and board of selectmen at the top and the town administrator are rung down. So, I, you know, I want to do things right and uh, I, I, go to the BOS and say, why doesn't anybody know about this? Well, first of all, you would go through the town administrator and the board of selectmen would just direct him to do that. Jim's on the call. So um, I, my, my advice to you is to work with Jim on getting an announcement out there. Madam, Madam Chair, if I could, I'm, I'm just actually surprised to, to have learned by following some of the emails that you're this far down the road. And, and honestly, my assessment is that you were really wrapped around the axle and believing that there's something really urgent going on when in fact, if you had come in and asked, uh, and not public records requests that, you know, have this tit for tat type thing, but actually come and say, hey, can I schedule time to sit down and talk? We could have talked about things very globally first, like in the 30 years that I've been doing this, Community development block grants are always a year and a half behind. So when you hear that it's a fiscal 18 grant and we're in 20, that sounds alarming, but that is standard. That's how they run. They run, we get the award for the fiscal 18 grant in 19 and contract in 19 with an 18 month window. So that would alleviate some of the concern right out of the gate. And then I would be able to tell you that with just an email to Mark Southard, the extension will be granted because it is commonplace in good times that these grants get extended because it takes time to do the work. Now we're dealing with not good times. We're dealing with COVID. We're particularly trying to do housing rehab, getting contractors that are willing to go into people's homes, getting people that are willing to have contractors come in their homes. It's been very difficult rant cycle. So, you know, the, the sense of urgency that you're, that you're feeling, uh, doesn't exist because um, if you've spoken to Mark Southard, which I've heard you say, he will have told you two things. I will guarantee you, and if you've not asked the questions, I'd encourage you to do so, that COG is one of the best in the Commonwealth for this purpose and that they are right on track, if not ahead of where other grant management firms are given the pandemic. And that should allow you to take a deep breath and say, okay, now let's look at if we're okay, how are we getting information out there? On the housing rehab side, I don't know if you know that we, for the better part of five years, have had a waiting list that will more than absorb the next five grants we're able to get. So um, it's not that people don't know that I asked, the money- I asked Cog about advertising. They said they had no need to advertise because they have such a long list of recent, who generated that list? The town held public hearings during the grant application, which was done by MRPC, public meetings, public hearings, televised, announcing the program. Then they went and did door-to-door, -door, neighborhood to neighborhood surveys. That document has existed for the better part of 15 years and it gets updated each grant we go after because you're required to update it and refresh it every time you go in for another bite at the apple. So, you know, and this is the type of stuff, Joan, that, you know, if you popped in or placed the call, Jim, I could tell you this I, stuff. I have to tell you with all honesty. Please. <clears throat> At this point in my career as a volunteer on doing on anything Townsend or as even a town resident, I I like to get things in writing. I just do because that's solid to me, and that's where I'm. I come from. It's got to be. If I'm not seeing it in writing, I'm not. I'm not believing it. And, and please, that's that's just what I. I that's me. And, and, that, and that's, that's fair. Where I'm at. And, and that's fair, Joan. And my point would be that I would be able to walk you across the hall and open the lateral file for CDBG, pull out the grant file, and show you the historical waiting list. These are these aren't my words. These are documents that. Well, that I would love to see. I've also been told that we're not allowed to access files during COVID. Who has told you that you can't access files? Um, uh, I asked Kathy Spofford to see some files and she said uh, you, no one can access files right now. Now that was a few months ago. I'm assuming now it's worse than I had asked then. 
So if I can come and go through those files, I'd be happy as a clam. Well, again, I can open the files and I can show you that the application, which is public, shows the work that went into it. I cannot show you the waiting list because people's confidential data is contained within those lists. But I can show you the application that went in. And it just seemed like for whatever whatever your thinking was, you jumped into this thinking that there was something amiss and something urgent. And I, I read each of your questions to Wayne and they just seemed really pointed and somewhat yeah. aggressive, somewhat yeah. aggressive. And I gotta tell you, Joan, hey. right now, we, right now, if your concern is the people being able to benefit from these funds, if this guy says, you know what, I'm done, I'm walking away, here's my key. Most people that you want to get the funds aren't going to get them. He I the don't think COG is going to walk away from their 160,000. And yeah, my, my question is pointed. They didn't need us, Joan. They didn't, we had to beg them to reconsider when they didn't apply because there was no one else available to administer the grant. Well, I think I might know someone else available. Um, but that said, yeah, okay. Um, women are allowed to be assertive too. And oh, don't go there. Uh, those don't, were don't my do pointed that. questions. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. It's not about a gender thing, Joan. Jim. It's about it's about how you present yourself. And to my reading, that was a very it was an affront to read the way you came at the guy. That it really is, was. Can I inter can I interrupt here for a second, guys? Um, first of all, Joan, thank you for saying what you say you you wanted in writing. I believe in that. In writing, just narrows everything down. It's factual, it's what it is. But I'm sitting here, and I don't know about anybody else. I'm here, and we got an $800,000 grant. I think we paid out $160,000 to whoever we did, and that's okay. We have money still there. No disrespect, Mr. Kreidler, but if there is a waiting list, why has that money not been allocated? Or why is that money not, why are people not getting that, them funds? That's, I don't know if you're, that's I don't a, know. an alarming thing to me. If we can sure. spend Joe, I don't know if you heard me. I don't know if you heard me, Joe, but what I said is you've got contractors that are hesitant to go in people's homes during the pandemic. You've got people that are equally hesitant to have contractors come into their home. So if you're trying to roll out a housing rehab program of 600 and some odd thousand dollars at 35 grand a pop, which is the max per, per household unit, and you've got to do a boiler or a roof or windows, that's not happening during a, pan, during a pandemic. A roof? Uh, sure. what, what about fuel assistance, Jim? How much of that money can be used for fuel assistance? Why aren't we giving people fuel assistance? There was a specific amount written into the grant. I don't have it in front of me tonight, Joan, but there is a specific amount of that grant that was written for fuel assistance. I know that the majority of the grant, some 600 plus thousand, uh, I think the grant was eight and change, and some yeah, six. And some six, 60 or 670 or so was for housing rehab. Mm, yeah, and twenty six thousand dollars for fuel assistance. That's it. So that that's a question. That's the cap on fuel assistance. That was the ask when the application went in. That was the ask. The the calculus was that there is more need based on the waiting list to repair people's homes. That was more important than to put fuel. Put fuel in the tank with no insulation or bad windows. You're chasing good money after bad. You repair the windows and then the fuel is gonna go further. So when the application went in, that breakdown is what was applied for. I'm still stuck on the fact that we're paying $160,000 to right. somebody. They didn't do any advertising. Where, they didn't, what they, are they we didn't need to, Joan. They have money. too many people already. Okay, so all right, all right. Excuse me, Excuse me. I asked the question. Sorry, I, Joe. Okay, yes, please. Uh, we're paying this money, one hundred sixty thousand dollars, to this company, and I'm not very knowledgeable about grants, so I'm not here to tell anybody, Jim or anyone else, how to do your job. It just brings to my attention that if we're paying the company $160,000 to take in, the way I'm understanding it is to manage that grant, why didn't we talk about a grant writer and 
people within our town. Couldn't we have used that $160,000 just to fund in-house ourselves, find somebody? And I'm just asking the question because as I just stated, I'm not that knowledgeable about it. And it's a good, it's I just a good question, want to Joe. kind of figure it out. Yeah, it's a good question. And, you know, Wayne, I don't know if Wayne is still on. You know, Wayne came to me and we talked over the last couple of days when this stuff started percolating. Um, in, in bigger communities, uh, like, you know, the city of Garden or the city of Fitchburg, they have all of those positions that you see on that management plan staffed in-house. So they have a block grant administrator. They have a block grant financial manager. They have a housing rehab person that goes out and does all the scoping of the projects and then manages the, the construction or the repairs that's going on and then certifies the work after the fact. And then somebody that is responsible to conduct the, the accounting and the, the, the final audit on it with the feds when the grant closes. Bigger communities have capacity to staff those things. Smaller communities, and, and I'd encourage you or anyone to to call around to other communities that are the size of towns and they're not staffed in-house because it's a very specific type of function and we don't have enough of that work to support paying for those people and the associated benefits and then laying them off when the grant's done and paying unemployment it makes better sense to hire it out on the shelf so you have groups like MRPC or COG that have that capacity. They have all of those people in house already with the skills that have been certified by the state and by the federal government to do the work. So it's not, it's not just, I mean, it kind of be like me trying to figure out how much it, it costs to, to repair a car, Joe, when it's been in an accident. I have no idea. I might look and say, how can it cost that much, Joe? And you have a, a and, 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 and I respect that, Jim. Yeah, and, no, and I know. I know. I That's just, the point I'm making. That's the point yeah. I'm making. Is you know these. Madam guys Chair. Doing... Madam yeah. Chair. Yes, Gary. I don't. I think we're we're debating issues, and I don't see us going anywhere. I'd like to be home in bed before midnight. But as a contractor, as a trustee on uh, two foundations, uh, Bank of America as well as the Community Foundation, I don't know how the 160,000 was derived. I don't know where MRPC sits. I'd like to think there's a roadmap, but 20% um, of $800,000 to administer grants from my 20 years of uh, philanthropical work with different foundations seems heavy, but I'm not sure we're gonna resolve anything today if everybody's entrenched in their own position. So I'd like you to see that we make a position and, and get the information that we need rather than continue being uh, kicking the can down the street and sending everybody sideways. Because frankly, I, I, it's not how I want to spend my time. Okay. So if we can make a motion and, and find out how to get these questions, if Jim would be kind enough to invite you in and show you the information and share it with you and you can disseminate it to the rest of us, that's great. If not, then maybe we got to have the selectmen direct him to do so. But it seems like, and my representation as a contractor doing those type of grants, roofs, septic systems, things like that, we've been given those uh, that opportunity and monies and said, you got 30 days to get these done. So a year and a half, maybe it takes a year and a half to put an RFP together, get the proposal, get the design done, get it out to the contractor, and then scramble like heck and tell the contractor he's got 30 days. There seems to be a little bit of a disconnect there. I don't know what it is. I'm not an expert in this, but I can tell you 20%. Um, is a lot. I guess my question would be, have we paid that 160000 already, or is it paid in progress payments? It's on drawdown in progress. And and the one the last point well, I'm making, then I'll no, start, so I promise. If that, let me, let me, so it's yeah. in drawdowns. How much has already been taken? I don't know. And how much has actually been used? Those would be questions I'd want to know because we're front ending that money. Right. And we don't have a legitimate organization bona fide that's willing to say, this is your percentage. Now, we've done millions of dollars literally in the COVID-19. And as the chair of the of this North Central Mass COVID Fund, I watch that and it's all percentage based. So 20 percent seems excessive. So I'd like to know what the scope was. And I only care about the scope since I'm on the committee, if I have a liability to someone utilizing funds without the appropriate contracts or the appropriate agreements. And I haven't seen those. And I've read that and I printed them all out, Joan, and I'm going through them here. And I have not seen line item schedules. And so without that, I think it's unreasonable for me to make um, an observation as to how to move forward until we get that. But it is sad 
that um, it's a year and a half, supposedly, after the grant's been given before it hits the street. People would lose their houses, be foreclosed on, or they'd fall into a river in the amount of time that it takes for the bureaucratic process to get out of the way. I do know that as a contractor, and I know plenty of them, guys are incredibly busy right now. They may not be in houses as much, but they still are. They can find a way to get it done. Right. But septics. Uh, roofing, things like that, which are all part of the CBG grants that we've received, are ongoing. That's ongoing work. Whether or not the grants are being administered, I couldn't tell you. I just twenty percent seems excessive to me. So, so that that and Gary, thank you. That is why I think we need to sit down with the BOS as soon as possible to go through this stuff bit by bit. For instance, they were supposed to have hired a bookkeeper slash accountant as part of the proposal. It was like 20 some odd grand. And there is not one. That's, that's, um, that's actually not, that's not true, Joan. That's not what, uh, uh, that's, Mr. Not, that's not what Mr. Dara told me. If you look at the information that he sent you, yes, it shows all of the positions that are required in the in the work plan and that they are funded by staff within COG. They don't go out and hire an individual to work the 3.2 hours per week it takes for Townsend. They have full-time staff that take on a caseload. And to Gary's point, this isn't 20% to administer the grant. That's 20% for administration and to hire a contractor that's out doing the scope, that's out in the field, doing the the, uh, the oversight of the construction, that's for the um, the lead abatement. So they have to hire lead abatement experts that are certified to do lead abatement. They go in and do those scopes. Then they have to have the financial people. So it's not just a 20% admin fee. These are actual bodies and boots on the ground that are doing these functions. So I think, again, I'll, this is what I'll shut up. I think your time is better spent inviting COG in to your meeting instead of going to the select board. Because if you go to the select board, and Wayne's here and he'll tell me to shut up, but if you go to the select board, they're not gonna have answers either. Jim. Have Cog in and ask them the questions. I hey guys, just one quick second. Uh, my battery, for some reason, my iPad is not keeping a charge. So if I end up blanking out, I'm gonna try to sign back in on my iPhone. So don't think I just quit on you. Thanks. That's Thanks, what I'm Jim. trying to, I'm trying to do it now right. as you guys are speaking, but right. technology, not good. Right, but this, so then we'll, we'll, we'll finish, but this is, this is what I, I'd like to say. I reached out to COG. I reached out to Diane Hansen. She took a week to get back to me. I, that is uh, inexcusable in my book. As a professional, you do not take a week to get back to someone who lives in a town who's paying you, and, you know, and for a grant. You just don't. And, um, you know, I, there, I have a lot of questions. And does Chaz, Laurie, do you have any, does anybody see a way forward here? Because this, we need, I, I really think we need to sit down with the board. And, and Jim, I don't, I don't know. Are you really supposed to be involved with grants? Isn't that our bailiwick or somebody no, else's no, bailiwick? No, in, in fact, it's not yours, which is curious that you've, 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 you've dove in like this. Because I don't quite understand what, what the nexus is. I mean, if I want to find a way, I can say, okay, when we put a housing rehab case in, we put 35 grand in a house, we put a lien on the house for 15 years, and we're able to count that under right. our affordable housing inventory. Right. And after, if they sell the house, we get paid back and it's no longer affordable housing or at right. the end of 15 years, it's no longer. So that's, that's the, the best nexus I can find for you. But when I read even your first outreach to Diane, I thought, ooh, goodness. Right. It's just I don't know if I don't know if you if you have a sense for how you come across when you write, but it's it's not it's not particularly something that makes people feel warm and wanting to respond to somebody that they that they just got kicked in the shins hey, about. When I Madam, Madam Chair, may I make a suggestion, please? Um, I would like to be able to to um, if you wanted to make a vote of um, the three of us to sit down and talk about this. Um, I I personally don't think that going in front of the board of selectmen right now without us gathering more information is appropriate. Okay. Um, I do not have a problem volunteering my time to kind of straighten this out um and, and and get our ducks in a row um i believe that we we do need to be a little more informed before we start um going to that level basically Lori, uh, Lori, i'm trying to get in on my iphone because i'm going to lose you guys can you oh, see me okay yep. okay wait a minute 
Uh, well, I'm going to have to get off my iPad. I've lost a couple of people, I guess. Okay. I, Natalie's coming back in and okay. So, um, all right. I like Chaz will volunteer my time to look into this a little bit more. We don't have to meet with the selectmen. I can tell you from my work in the field, um, not as much as Gary's, but certainly I have seen many septic systems installed in 2020. I've seen more than I've seen septic systems installed. I've seen roofs put on homes. So if we have that long a waiting list, I feel bad that not more has been done because there are so many facets of um, the industry that have been so busy in 2020, you can't even get contractors um, to fit you into their schedules. So, and, and I know right now of a house that's for sale in Townsend that needed a septic system last summer. And the people ended up leaving the house because they couldn't get one. And the house is not foreclosed on. The bank would not foreclose. And it's up for sale now, basically, for whatever they can get. That's sad. Yeah, it is. Because, that, this, because this town had the money to be able to put that in for them. Um, so, Gary, I agree with you. Chaz, I agree with you. So um, if it's not us, one, why are we even involved in it? And whose responsibility is it? to yeah. be able to get this to get off the dime. Now, if it doesn't have anything to do with us, then we'll go back to where we started, that we approved the 40,000 or 100,000 right. and Central Mass Housing Authority puts the grants in and we disperse the money and then we ignorantly move along. But um, I, I guess my questions would be, how much of the money has been spent? What's the agreement look like? And who's really responsible for this? And if it's not us, then we probably don't need to be spending a lot of time on it. But if it is us, we need to have those questions answered. Well, and I'd like to know, I mean, I, I was just told two days ago they hadn't even filed an extension for the thing yet. And it's over on December 30th. Can I, I, I guess. thousand there. I guess my question would be to Laurie and Chaz. Um, you just heard Gary's input. Are, are we doing the right thing by having all these conversations? Is it in the town administrator's hand? He takes care of it the way it has to be done? Or should we be going down this road not to step on anyone's toes, but to help? I, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I believe that to, to answer your question, um, I believe that I had conversations about this particular grant with the land use coordinator back when it was being put together. Um, in in regards to that and i just feel that there definitely there definitely does need to be visibility on these things yes. which which you know i i think that's that's where the quandary is right now but i i also believe in the process and we do have to follow the process and the process says let's let's gather our forces and look to see if this is something we need to be spending our time on and if it's not then we need to move move on and again, I just want to go. My understanding is that this is a, a, a BOS thing, and um... it's it's really not. We're 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 autonomous boards, so we, you know we in and unless we we you know no, I don't think it's it's at to that level right now, Joan. To be quite honest with you. Okay, so um, then Chaz, Laurie, Joan, we we I'll go look at the files. We get together and we discuss what I find in the files. I just want to find out if it's something that we really need to be involved in. I agree. And I don't know enough about it, so I'm not going to chime in on that. You know, I did see that there's a lot of money paid out. And they, yep. uh, we're paying money to contractors, and that's great because that's what we want. We want the community to be able to the beneficiaries of any money that mm -hmm. the state or the government's willing to give nowadays. Mm -hmm. But secondhand, you want to make sure it's being done right. And 
once again, I don't know, but if it's something that uh, Housing Trust Authority, we need to be involved, by all means, I want to be involved, but if, if it's something that doesn't, there's a lot of more important things on everyone's plate, but, you know, Joan, I think you're going the right way. You've asked a lot of questions, and let's get answers to them. Thank you. This, it's important to me. Well, mm -hmm. then you are the chair, so, you know, um, you let Laurie, us. And Ch Laurie, Chaz, do you have a suggestion, please, on where we go, like, right this second, please? Um. Uh, Lori, do you feel that we need to to be voted in to discuss this further, or we can just, you know, I, I just for protocol's sake. I think each board can recognize that this is what is going on, mm -hmm. and that um, they seem to be in agreement that the three of us look into whether or not um, we need to be concerned with it how's that yeah and that just point blank and um if wayne as board of selectmen rep seems to feel that it's just in the town administrator's hands and has nothing to do with the trust fund we need to know that But those are again; those are things that we can we can figure out. I mean, to to Jim's own words, um, when part of what happens with this grant money is that once a project is done, the property is considered part of our affordable housing count for 15 years. So that is part of Towns and Housing Authority. So. Um, we probably should have some idea of what's going on there. And if there's any way we can help, we should be doing that. Correct. That's why I want to look at this further. Good idea. Perhaps a working session. Yeah, just a working session. And it does not have to be any kind of public anything. We'll just be three of us. We won't be a quorum. Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll come back when we have a report. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. And Jim, and if you have any guidance for what we can do um, to keep that affordable housing count going up, that's yeah. that's our I mean, time. I think there's there's really room for a quick reset here. That this is something that is important. You're right. It's something that counts towards affordable housing, which is good. So let's hit reset. Get in the room with the actual contractor and the files and see how we can everybody make certain that we're in the boat rowing in the same direction because everybody wants the same thing here but i think we're kind of talking you know across under and beside each other right. instead of having everybody in the room okay um how about if i uh let you and um joan work out when we can get cog on a, on a Zoom, not in the same yep. room. Okay. Yep. yep. No, that's fine. Cog's on. Cog's on now. So, if any anyone else wants to sit in on it, are we allowed? Or what, where is that going? No. No. Let's just let's just have um, the three of us and Jim okay. and Cog, and we'll put a report together. All right. Awesome. Well, we'll hear what the outcome is. Yeah. All right, perfect. Okay. We don't have to waste everybody's time. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, guys. So with that, with that, do we reach down to, uh, looks like there's a few of these topics that we could probably skip over for tonight then. I, th I think we're done. Yeah, we already went down them, all right. Did we approve the minutes? No, we have to. So, I, yeah, we are done because you had the discussion about the three of us setting up a meeting with the BOS, and instead it's going to be with um, Jim and Cog. And then now, we have to approve the meetings, the minutes from the October uh, 27 meeting. And I, I have a question about those minutes. I'm sorry, Laurie, I interrupted you. Well, I'm... The two sets of minutes that are here, Jody, are they joint or are they um, 
one is joint, one is not. I was posting all of our approved minutes and I couldn't find the approval for September 17th. Right. So I decided to err on the side of caution. The right. October 27th meeting are joint. Okay. Okay. So to everyone on the Towns and Housing Authority, may I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes as sent out to you for October 27th, 2020. I make a motion to approve the, um, the minutes from October 27th. Thank you, Natalie. You're welcome. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Courtney. Any further discussion on the Townsend Housing Authority um, minutes for October 27th, 2020? Hearing none, I'll take a roll call vote. Laura Schiffer and I. Natalie Call, I. Courtney Riley, I. Joe Sexton, Dorini, and I. Thank you. Um, uh, now I'll entertain a, a motion to accept the minutes as presented for September 17th, 2020. It's for the Towns and Housing Authority. I make a motion to accept the minutes. No, Joe, the, no. <laughs> no. Wrong group. Wrong no. group. <laughs> I make a motion to accept the, 20, uh, the September 17th, 17th minutes, please. Second. Thank you, Courtney. Any further discussion on those minutes for September 27th, 17th, sorry, 2020? Sorry. Hearing none, I'll have a roll call vote. Laura Schiffer and I. Natalie Carl, I. Courtney Riley, I. Jess Sexton, Durini, and I. Thank you, so approved. Joan, could you have um, your board please approve the minutes of October 27th, 2020? We did do that at our 11-5 meeting. Okay. Okay, All right. but we do need, no, excuse me. Yeah, but we do need to approve the 11-5 minutes. Okay, that's your board. Yes. Go so, ahead. Um, does uh, the Townsend Affordable Housing Trust, anyone have any Questions or comments about the um, Thursday, November 5th meeting minutes? Nope. I do. Uh, item uh, 3.3. A concern and question was raised on funds available for. THA. Further questions raised if there were any other grants available to Townsend. Suggested that between 380000 and 420000 available to Townsend. Does anyone know where that came from? Was it, uh, excuse me, on which date, Joan? I did the minutes. On the 11.5 the, uh, the 11 minutes that you did, Gary. Item 3.3. No, I know that the format was changed from the format that I had written them down, which is okay, because I, I guess we have to have uniform 3.3, whether the concern was raised on the funds available from the Towns and Housing Authority, question, uh, further question was raised, if there were any other grants available, that one there? Yep. You want to know who authored that conversation? No, I want to know where where these numbers came from. So during that meeting, from my notes, we were at $40,000 that we were going to move from, um, and excuse me if I got the semantics of it wrong, that we were gonna move from the amount of money that the state had given us up to $100,000 and transfer the ability for the Central Mass Housing Authority to grant um, grants or reward award grants up to $100,000 from 40,000. That's right, but I'm looking at this, this 380,000 to 420,000. So that was part of the conversation that how much is the amount of available money that we could, what was the total amount of available money that we would be able to use to assist homeowners and mortgages or in fuel assistance. And that's where that number came from. Who, who posited that number? I can't tell you who authored that number. I can tell you who wrote the number and that was me. Anybody know about that number? <laughs> I remember talking about it, but we're, you know, we're talking about, you know, how much money was out there. That's the total amount of money for the COVID funds. That's our allot that were that was allotted for Townsend. Oh, that oh, for the whole town. Thank yep. you, Chaz. Got it. 
Lovely. It, okay. It, it truly takes a village to write the minutes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so any other comments about the 11-5 uh, 2020 uh, Towns and Affordable Housing Trust Fund minutes? You, I hope you're, I will only vote on the 11-5. I won't vote on the others because I was not a, uh, present. Yeah, we, no, that's all, that's all we have to vote on is the 11-5. So, um, Lori, what, what words am I supposed to use now? Just you'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes of 11 I will uh, entertain a motion to accept the minutes of 11-5-2020, please. Joe, you should do that. I can't uh, do that. I wrote them. I make a motion. We accept the 11-5-2020 minutes as proposed. Am I allowed to say second? No. Gary seconds. Second. You seconded, Gary? Yes, yes he did. All right. Uh, all in favor say aye. We have to do a roll call vote. We're yes. remote. Joan Savoy, aye. Joe Shank, aye. Gary Shepard, aye. All set. Aye, 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 aye. <laughs> Madam Chair, I make a motion that the Townsend Housing Authority adjourn. Is there a second? I second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Roll call vote. Natalie Carl, aye. Courtney Riley, aye. Chad Sexton, Duraney, and I. And Laura Schiffer and I. Thank you, THA. <laughs> yep. Thank you, Trust. Thanks, Jim, for joining us. Uh, does somebody on my team have a, a motion that we get out of here? Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Shepard makes the motion with no roll call vote needed. No, <laughs> we have to. We're, re we're remote. It's the law. It's the law. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion we adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Gary, are you going to second that? Second, yeah. Great. Okay, roll call vote. Uh, all in favor say aye. Joan Savoy, aye. Joe Shank, aye. Jody Shepard, aye. Jody, thank you. Happy yeah, holidays, Jody, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. Bye.